What's going on guys? So I wanted to make a quick video for you today um, because I've been going over my own trades and been doing a lot of journaling today and going over my own journal, um, optimizing my process and stuff like this. And um, I wanted to introduce you to these three concepts. They're super powerful and they could potentially help you a lot um, in your trading. So I've gone back in time. This is where I went back to all my journaling and uh, I found a couple of really good trades that I took. And um, these concepts here were all utilized within this trading range. So I just thought, screw it. I'm going to record the video here and show you how you could have utilized these to capitalize on some big moves um, in the market. So let's start on the, the daily time frame here. Um, I've marked it out. I've gone back to the beginning of March where we had the big push on oil. Um, we can see here we've got the swing low and uh, the swing high. And um, if we go to the four hour and inside this structure, we can see the last impulse leg of the four hour push before price started to stall out. So what can we see here, guys? We've got an impulse, mini retracement, impulse, retracement, and a third on the third impulse, we've got a retracement, but then price failed to break the high. Now, that's a strong indicator, guys, when price continually breaks the high, and we've got the wicks above like this, the price is going to reverse and at least come and retest the lows, which it did. It broke the lows. And you can test this on any time frame, guys. I use this on the five minute, the 15 minute, etc., etc. If you've got any questions on this, post down below. So, what we can see here is we had a breaker structure which was very nice, break a structure, break a structure, and then we was expecting another break a structure with order flow. However, price stalled out. So then we're immediately thinking, hmm, price is failing to create highs. Okay, and uh, if we zoom down in lower time frames here on the very first um, impulse, one second, there's a gap there in the, in the price. So I'll, I'll just stay on the four hour for this bit. So here, we did have confirmation uh, for a sell. As you can see on the four hour, we've got like a tweezer top formation, but inside we had internal breaks of structure, et cetera, et cetera. So we had a good sell confirmation here. We can place the um, stop loss above the highs. Order down there was a nice order. So anyone that took this, this, this order here would have had the stop loss above the, the highs here. However, the real move wasn't ready. And you can see this because the price went up and we had this big wick here. And this is another confirmation, guys. When you see a big wick like this, at a previous high or an equal high or um, a zone of liquidity, um, you can normally guarantee that price is going to reverse and go in the opposite direction. So we had a lot of confluence here that price was reversing. You know, here we had a build of liquidity. Um, we had a wick to the top side. We had filled highs. Highs never broke above this level. And we also had the RSI divergence. So down here, look, the RSI was showing that um, price was dropping, but in reality, on the charts, what we were seeing is price was rising. So we had a lot of confluence here that price was going to go down. So we caught this move on the, the lower time frame here. So I was watching the buildup of um, liquidity. We did have uh, some internal breaks of structure here, which I was watching. Um, whenever you get a break of structure, you expect a retest. Um, this actually on the hourly broke structure to the upside. So you can see here, look, we broke structure. And uh, price came down, but didn't break structure again on the hourly. But on the 15-minute chart, zoom in, the 15-minute broke structure. 15-minute break of structure is a good confirmation, especially when it lines up with the four-hour four hour failed highs. And if we... Um, use uh, an indicator called the Asia session high, the FXN, we can actually trade away from the high of the day. So we had the breaker structure here. We could have really refined this entry um, on the lower time frames, internal breaker structure. We've got more filled highs here, look on the lower time frame, and then we could have taken this trade from the high of the day. So if we go back here, again, so we've got a lot of confluence here. We've got from the four hour, We've got filled highs. <clears throat> we go from the one hour. So we go down to the 15 minute and we've got a 15 minute breaker structure and we've got filled highs again here. Look. And price is sitting right on that swing high level. So here, um, if we could go down further time frames, um, I would, but I can't. So we would technically have taken a sell here with price above these weeks. I wouldn't have used this size stop loss. I just can't go down the, the time frames to show you the exact stop loss. On this one, I used like a 100 pip stop loss. It was like here. <laughs> and then we go down. We'd be targeting this low for our first um, TP on this trade here. Let me just remove the this indicator here so you can see it a bit clearer. Okay, I'm just going to delete it. 
We don't, we'd be targeting this, this, this low first because this was the previous low that broke structure, filled high, so we'd be expecting this previous low to be tested, so that would be TP1. This would be TP2, but we, then we'd also be expecting this liquidity here to be grabbed. So we'd take profit here, we'd take, take profit here, going to move the stop to break even, and then we'd have left a runner. So if we go back to the one hour, just so it's clearer, we've got in on the trade there, price is coming up, and again, look, you can see a little bit more liquidity created here. Price is creating liquidity. It was making people think it was going to go long. So it was getting people to go long, put the stops below here, and then boom. It took these people that were buying out here because price was bullish uh, on the hourly, and uh, it took these people out here. Anyone that had the stop loss below here got wiped out. And we could actually have taken a second entry here as well if we used the FIB. Probably came close to the 50%, just above it, 6 on 8 that time. What we could have seen though, here, if we go down to the low time frame, is we actually had some supply there. That's for a different video though, I don't want to get too complicated on it. Um, and we had another set of filled uh, highs here. That we could have taken another entry from. And if we had confluence there with, um, if we go back onto the FXN, here's your high. So this day, that would have been high of the day. So we could put the stop loss again above the high of the day. That was the current high of this trading day. Let me just remove the, the indicator again. And go back to the, out to the hourly. And then we'd have had two trades running down here. We'd have taken partials, etc., etc. But that's just how we would get into the this move here on the, the lower time frames. We can optimize it on lower time frames. Um, but this is what we do. You know, from the higher time frame, you just want to take it from the higher time frame, keep it simple. You'd have a higher stop loss, larger stop loss, sorry, but we've got all the confluences we need. We've got filled highs, we've got RSI divergence, and we've got, um, you know, internal breaks of structure. <clears throat> so just with that confirmation there on the four hour, we would be aiming to retest these lows with the stop loss above the previous highs, which, as you see, they got retested. So we will leave those two there for now. We would have left runners actually running if we took those two trades. So what have we got now? If we zoom down to the lower time frames, we have now got an hourly break of structure here, and price has pushed all the way down. We had a big bearish push, a nice order flow there. We've got a little bit of um, unmitigated um, imbalance here. Let me just put that as uh, supply. But if we get the fib out, what can we see? That's not the fib. High to low, landing directly on the 50%. There are thereabouts. So this was um, uh, this was the point that caused this this break in structure, and this break in the higher time frame structure here. And you can see here the structure was actually retested, and it landed almost on. If we put this down, almost on the fifty percent. So we've got a break of structure. We've got a pullback. We always expect a pullback after a break of structure. Let me just show you here. I'll just zoom out a little bit. So if we, if we look at these here, so if we get the fib. Let's go high to low, break structure, pull back to the 50%. Let's just delete that so it doesn't get messy. High to low, pull back to the 50%. So we would have had buying opportunities in there as well on the way up. But right now I'm just showing you trades on the way down. I want to keep it simple, don't want it to get confusing. So again here, we would have had... And we did have confirmation. We've got a break of structure. Every time the structure breaks, remember, we expect, you know, some form of retest and a continuation to test the lows. So this time, we would have taken, we could have taken a, a second entry here on the way down. Stop loss above the, the high here. And then we would have targeted this low here. Let's press play. Almost hit. Okay, boom, that low hit there. If we were doing proper targets, we would have had like this as a, a TP. Could have this as a TP2, and that would have been a TP3. So those are the new three TPs, depending on how you trade. So we've got that one there. And again, let's, let's measure. Look, comes exactly to the 50%. So let's take another order from here. We would have taken another order from here because, look, we got um, a break of structure again. Internal breaks of structure. 
Higher time frame structure still isn't broken because we've still got wiki until that's broken, but we've had internal breaks of structure. So it came from this point here, this point broke internal breaks, lower time frame breaks of structure, and came back to the 50%. We had one rejection, engulfing candle, could have taken it off the first one here. That broke structure again there. So that's a good sign that we're, go that we're going down. Price came up, made a double top into this supply zone here, right on the 50%. And then this time, because we're getting close to the higher time frame demand, we would be aiming to take profit really just above that demand. Here. We press play. Okay, target's hit. So now price is touching our PRZ, our point of interest, our potential reversal zone. Um, let's zoom out on the higher time frame and have a look what's going on. Break the structure here. So what we want to be doing now, guys, ideally, is looking for a break in momentum, or a break of structure, at least on the 15 minutes. So when price gets into these zones, guys, I like to draw a momentum line. And if you zoom down the time frame, there we go. It needs to touch at least two or three points to be valid. It's basically a trend line. Got some liquidity there. This is all technically liquidity. We've got a little bit there that will be targeted, most likely. So down. There we go. Look, so price has now started to break the momentum line. And at the same time, it's broken the momentum line. It's also broken structure. So now we've got a broken structure here to work with. And we've also got filled lows. So you see how it works at the bottom, how it works at the top. Let me put filled lows here at the bottom. <clears throat> so price filled to break below this. The candles did not close below this. And then this low here actually broke that structure. So this shows on the 15 minutes that bulls are now taking control. So what would we expect now? After break of structure, we expect a pullback. Sorry about that. So after break of structure, we expect a pullback. So we've got price inefficiency here, imbalance, and we've got a new supply zone that was created by the break of structure. So we know we've got um, potentially some strength lying in this zone here. Now what we're looking for next, guys, is price to either tap into our zone here and uh, give us a reversal pattern. Um, it'll be a bit more difficult on the 15 minute um, because I'm used to going down to the one minutes and stuff to confirm. Um, but we can just confirm with the candle for this example. So we've got the breaker structure here. And uh, by the way, this stuff works on all of the time frames as well. So you can confirm this by three minutes, five minutes, breaker structure, etc. I do prefer the five minute uh, breaker structure because you will get tighter entries and stuff like this. Um, so this concept, all of these concepts work on the, the, the five minute, the three minute, the one minute, etc. Just be cautious though when you're going down to the three minute or the one minute because, um, you know, quite a lot of those entries and stuff are invalidated because the moves, you know, can be pretty small. Yes, bricks of structure do start on the, the one minute, then the three minute, then the five minute, etc., etc. But if you do wait for a five minute or a 15 minute, you know, or 10 minute confirmation, um, then you've got a much higher probability because you're going to have uh, a lot more internal bricks of structure on the time frames below that um, that are already confirmed, you know, for your potential, you know, larger move in the direction that you're hoping for price to go in. So let's see. We've got um, supply zone here, demand zone here. Price is now ranging between these zones. Um, but we know price is now... Sorry, um, I need to do this in blue. Price is now bullish. We're expecting these highs to break and we're expecting this to be mitigated or wicked into uh, for people that have gone long already. Uh, the same as it did at the top, if you remember, with this wick here. We expect when there's a, a, a high like this or an equal low, something like that, we always expect a, a liquidity hunt or a manip some form of manipulation to go through that and that we use that as an extra confirmation. And uh, that comes into Wyckoff and uh, stuff like that. So, but that's for a different video. But let's see what price is going, see what price wants to do. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so what have we got here? Price started breaking above uh, supply, but then it's given us a change of character. And what a change of character is, is you get something like this, basically another filled high. So we've got price action, remember at the top, it was pushing up, broke structure, pullback. We get a pullback, we expect it to break high, but it doesn't. So what do we expect then? We expect another test of the low or for it to break the low. And what you'll normally see when you see this type of formation is divergence again. So we've got divergence again at the bottom here, look. Price is technically going down, it's telling us price is going down. The price here is going up. So we could take this on the lower time frames. We already have confirmation. We'd have internal breaks of structure, etc., etc. Once we get this 15 minute break of structure and a candle close below, we can take this uh, with high probability 
knowing that the lows are going to be potentially tested. So this is a good sell here. You can put your stop loss here to be super surf, or you can put it just above the structure here. I always pre uh, prefer to be super surf with the members. Um, me, I personally go like lower, but then I use higher lots and I scale in and out of positions differently to what we do with the signals. So let's save the stop, uh, stop loss there, and let's press play. As you see, look, I would have been, if I put it here, I would have been wicked out. Price created a new, um, Price mitigated the new supply there and then came back and uh, created an equal low here. So that is liquidity, potential liquidity here. So let's go to the bottom of that. So we've got liquidity here, equal lows. So potentially now price is going to break up to the top side or come into here and then break. So this would be classed as inducement. So let's see what happens next. Oh, there we go. Look, so... Price has taken out liquidity, so anyone that was seeing this potential reversal pattern here, price breaking to the highs, etc., etc., failing to make new lows, they would have just been taken out if they had bought in here, if they bought in there, and the stops would be low here. So we could take this long now with low time frame confirmation. We've got engulf in there, and we put our stop loss below the demand zone to be super safe or just below this wick um, to be a bit more aggressive. So we'd be expecting now price to go up if we go on the 30 minutes. So we've got a 30 minute break of structure and breaking momentum. And this is our big clue that price is going to reverse as long as these lows hold down here. So we're going to have some, you know, internal messing around with price action. And uh, this is sometimes where we get the Wyckoff accumulations and distributions at the bottom of here. So we could technically class this as a Wyckoff. We've got um, an up thrust, sign of strength, another potential sign of strength. And uh, we've got the, one second, the wicks down here. Although so far we haven't had a spring that goes below, we still had a, another test of the low here. So let's take this trade, see what happens. There we go. It's taking off. And then what we do then is we would look again, look, price is now breaking. So if you look on the 30 minutes, let's look on the 15 minutes actually. So price broke structure here to the downside. And then price messed around inside. It couldn't break the lows again. Failed lows. So we could have actually bought that or off the failed low here. After this, after that last failed low, it would have been a risky trade, but it was failing lows. And it was showing us that it couldn't push down any further. So we could have put the stop loss below there and taken that buy up to the first wick here or the, the, the breaker structure level here. And then just left a runner and see how far it went. So then this was our trading range here between these two, uh, this high and low here. And then we actually had price break above this. So that would have faked a lot of people out there. This is why it's always good to be patient. So we didn't really get a solid candle uh, close above uh, this, this wick here. Price broke down. We did get this candle close above here. Now that would have induced some breakout traders and they would have um, put the breakout traders, put stop loss below this last candle here and they would have gone for the breakout here. That would have reversed on them. That would have caught them out. Um, that strategy just works sometimes. But if we're just patient like this, we're expecting price, remember, to come back down to these zones here. You know, we've got liquidity. We've got equal lows. We've got a mitigated supply, etc., etc. So if, if price is genuinely going to turn around, price needs to clear all this inefficiency first. So when you start seeing these breakouts and stuff like this, just hold on. Don't let your emotion get tied in and just wait because you'll find that price will come back. And even on Wyckoff, Schematic and stuff like that, a lot of people buy on the sign of strength and the breakout and they get caught, they get caught out buying up here. And then even though they get the direction right, they get caught out buying up here. So for example, buying on the breakout, whatever. They get they get the direction right, but they just get the timing wrong. And it's all about just understanding what's going on down here. We've got inefficiencies, we've got liquidity, we've got inducement, etc, etc. And then we can see price slowly coming down, messing around, etc, etc. But once we get this confirmation here, on the 15 minute, ideally look, this, we had a breaker structure down, that didn't break that. This broke the structure here. So this was technically our high low point here. So once price had broken this, if you wanted to take the 15 minute entry, we'd wait for price to break this level here. And remember, each time it breaks, it pulls back. And um, look at that, perfectly to the 50%. So it broke structure. We expect price to continue. We could put the stop loss below there. Expect price to break structure. Take it off the 50%. 
stop loss under the previous wick, and boom. And then, that's how we'd catch the bottom end of that reversal. And we'd just watch price take off. And then we'd have other demand zones here that we continue to use following the same process and we'd take the trades. And uh, that's how I caught a couple of them trades uh, back in the VIP group. So any questions on this, guys, post underneath. You want to join the VIP free groups, links are underneath, free course underneath, everything underneath that you will need. Um, and that's it, guys. Apart from that, enjoy trading and um, I'll speak to you soon, guys.